All right, uh, this is what happened when the, uh, you know, went to the show and did a sustained multi-hour drive two ways. Oil. So I've been oozing. Now yeah, there's two reasons that this is going to happen near as I can tell. Because it hasn't happened up to this point. One, and this would be really bad, I cracked the piston. Or multiple pistons. I don't think so because at full steam ahead it seems to... Uh, run pretty well. It would run poorly with a cracked piston. The other thing is the breather box. I don't know if anybody's actually noticed this, but notice that all I have is a couple of vacant holes right there. And uh, uh, so I'm not actually breathing straight out. What you don't see is that back down in here I have some glass wool. And uh, I, you know, I've had that glass wool in there for decades. I started doing that way back when I was running uh, my 1415 back in the 80s. And for that little dinky engine, it seems to have worked just fine. But I think I may have a little bit too much volume for that to work. So I'm going to, much as I hate to do it, I'm going to drill some holes in the top of these guys. And I'm going to build a breather system coming off of this thing right here and uh, I don't want it to look too cheap and cheesy so I've always been into uh, piping and tubing so I'm not going to run it with like fuel lines and whatnot I'm actually going to build it out of tubing there goes your daughter so this is part one of what it's going to take to get this thing done uh, just a few parts got myself some tubing here this will be just fine these things bolt, will bolt ultimately into the top of the carb uh, air filter housing. One for each side. And I need one to go into the, uh, the breather box. And I got two extras just because it's the cheapest way to do it. And then I got some, uh, oops, I got to replace this. 45 degrees, that's the wrong one. But anyway, I got two 45s. That'll come off the air filters. One over there, one over here. All right, you got a T. T's in. This tube right here is going to run off the T over that direction. Uh, let's see here. That's going to be like this. This guy comes over here. It's like that. I need a 90 degree going into the air filter. That's one there. I need a 90 degree to the air filter. 90 degree to the air filter. That guy goes like this. We've got a 90 degree to go like this. Something like that, and then a 90 degree to go down. And then of course I've got to take the copper pipe, we've got to chop it up in a whole bunch of different pieces. Alright, this is uh, getting a little bit closer here. Alright, maybe you can see a little bit better about what I'm trying to do. Okay, this is going to drop in, drops into the top of an air cleaner. Specify drop into the top of an air cleaner, it comes across, goes like this. Here's our T. This is approximately where the air breather is. So we're going to do a right angle, come over to this thing, right angle into here. The problem is this guy right here, 45 degrees. This going over to there. The angle's too steep. I need like a 60. Alright, I'm at the point now where I have kind of a preliminary fitting. I bored a 5 8 inch hole in the top of this one. And this one so that I could drop in my uh, my tube right there, my copper pipe there. And of course we've got this piece here. This is going to fit in over there and drop into this. And it, I can shut the deck lid. It's pretty tight here and here. So I'm going to shorten this one and shorten this one a tiny bit. Where's that one? There it is. Shorten this guy. And it's twin on the other side so that uh, it all drops back and rather than fitting in the front hole, I'm going to bind it into the back hole. But, uh, oh my god, you have no idea how long it took me to get to this point. Just getting the right stuff and uh, tools and drill bits. And back and forth. Twi two trips to Menards and one trip to Home Depot. Okay, tweaked it a little tiny bit. Uh, as you can see, I'm a little bit closer to where this hole needs to be. So that part's pretty decent. I had to increase the length of this one. One, I wasn't totally centered, but there was uh, 
definitely I had it a little bit too short and I didn't want to do both tubes so I just did that one it was uh, needed to go a little bit further this way so it's pretty balanced but it is ever so slightly longer on this side so as part of the breather system you know I've got to uh, I've got to route this hole out here right here which I might be able to do I might be able to get some clearance between there and there might be able to, I'm not real sure. If I come around this way and give it a look, it looks like it looks like I can clear. So if I get the deck lid out, I think I can go that direction. But the other issue that I have with it, I have to get inside this box right here because uh, I don't know if any of you actually noticed. I mean, I'm, I don't have any kind of a filter on here, right? But I'm not letting atmosphere run in and out of this thing right here. In the top of this, I've got some glass wool. I need to get that glass wool out of there, either way. So this bolt, or sorry, that screw, this screw are fine. This screw is not cooperating, it's like stuck. So I'm going to have to drummel the top of this screw off in order to pull this off. And another issue that I've got is that the gasket that's behind this thing is like 35 years old. So it may be shot. And there it is, we got it all popped open. Here's my little bit of glass wool right there, acting as a filter. That's absolutely ancient. I put that in there, you know, way back when I put this thing together. I must have way too many miles on that. Probably 50, 60,000 miles on that wad of stuff. Uh, anyway, this is the back end of this. And uh, as you can see, based on the blueness of what you're looking right there, yeah, apparently, I don't remember doing it, but decades ago I must have gotten rid of the gasket that came with this thing because it malfunctioned. It was a piece of junk. That's a bead of silicon in there. Which worked. This thing didn't really leak. Deck lid off. Once again, let's see how the clearance looks now that the deck lid's off. Yeah, I'll be able to get to that. And there we are, all drilled up. Got the right diameter for the pipe. Goes all the way through. Top, bottom. It's got before any of this stuff goes anywhere. I got to get my shop back out and clean up. All right. Got another miserable cloudy day. The camera will settle down. And uh, it's been about a week. I've been waiting to get a. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Ah, there it is. I've been waiting for this. It's a tap. So that I could tap into the top of this and get this done. And of course the two uh, the two filter tops. So anyway, I got that. Got this in here. Got a uh, little block off for this one right there. But I've been trying to turn these guys into studs instead of screws. So I've got them embedded in there right now. I've got a uh, nylock nut on it. Keep things from backing off. Got to get a little silicon sealant in there. The seals that they give you, they're going to leak. So, this is going to be better. But anyway, I got to get my Dremel out and chop these guys off a little bit. There we go, all studded up. And silicone in place. And that's an awful lot easier to deal with than the, the screws that used to be in there. Again, it's one of these things, one that was in... This is an early version of this thing, and I bet uh, CB Performance changed the way that works. On a, on a newer version of it, kind of like the way they, uh, they modified the air filters. Okay, now that I've got the linkage back in here, everything's tightened down, i got the air filter tops tightened down, which means my base for installing the, you know, my breather tube here is fixed. Um, I can now kind of finalize the assembly here. One of the first things I got to do is this 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 drop right here has got to be shortened. I don't have a lot of clearance right there, and it doesn't need to stick up all that high. I got to tighten it down and take this down about as much as I can. Anyway, I bought a tool today to do that, so I'm going to use it. Okay, I'm getting a little bit closer with this breather system here. I've got my risers trimmed down as tight as they can get. And uh, that one, this one, that one over there. I've got uh, 
some space back, just a little bit of space back behind this one. It's very close to the breather box, but uh, there is some clearance right there. Uh, when you close the deck lid, we're pretty tight right here and right there, but there's definitely some clearance. So, it's another miserable, kind of cloudy day out today, but the uh, temperatures are fantastic. So, I've been working on soldering my, my pipe stuff up here. And uh, I think this one worked pretty well. I'm no soldering pro. But I do know enough to know that when I was doing that joint right there, both sides, I'm like, this one's just not working right. And it turns out, if I could find the stuff somewhere, I don't know, somewhere around here I've got some, uh, some flux. It's ancient. I didn't realize that uh, flux goes bad. And uh, I'm like, no, I've done this a hundred times. I mean, I've probably done hundred joints through my life, you know. Being a homeowner, sometimes you got to do some plumbing. So the only thing I could think is I needed new flux. So I got some new flux. There it is. It's my old solder. And then when you put it together, everything begins to work. So this side worked fine. Okay, so I've got the I've got the the half assemblies installed, pressed into place, about the right height. I don't want to have this. Like if you look at this thing straight, you can see right now that it's like this end is a little bit higher than that end. So I've got a little bit of a lift, but that's because there's like there's there's play in this end out here, and it'll actually lift when I tighten everything up. So that's pretty straight. So about right there is where it needs to fit. And then I've got this, this three-way tie-in right there. So that one, if it moves, I'm screwed. So i got to be able to pull it apart while absolutely positively maintaining that rotation. And the tie-in to both of the horizontal tubes. So i got to figure out how I'm going to do that right now. And there it is. The toughest joint. Oh boy, I hope that holds and is pointed the right direction and whatnot. But uh, like I said, I wanted to get it flat. And I figured the only way to get it flat wasn't to do it while it was installed, but to bring it out here and put it on the concrete floor. Make it horizontal. So hopefully that worked. Uh, it was so close, but uh, this fitting right here, I've actually got to push it a little bit too hard to get it to drop in there, which means this little piece of pipe right there it's ever so slightly too long, so I've got to reheat this one. And I slide this connection, chop this pipe down, and then put it back on again. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Hey, well, it's always some little thing, but uh, it, it was close. It was real close. There it is, the last of the welds. Not welds, but soldering is done in that area right there. So I've got that done. And it drops in pretty easy. It's not too bad looking like that, but I'm not going to leave it like that. I kind of debated whether I was going to go silver or black and I think it's actually too prominent like that so I don't want to go silver I think it would look even more prominent so I think I'm going to paint it black and uh, uh, the brass fittings over here I think I'm going to they, they make an anodized paint that looks an awful lot like that blue right there so I'm going to go out and get myself a little blue paint for the for the, uh, the brass pieces and uh, get that done yeah, it's looking good. This is going to work well. So I've got them all painted now. It's not the stickiest paint in the world. Let's see if I can grab one. It's got a little bit of goldish tint coming through. Focus, focus, that's better. I think if I ding them a little bit, it's going to pop the paint off. Well, that's okay, just paint him again. Anyway, I think it worked pretty well. It's pretty darn close to anodized. It actually, you know, in person it looks pretty decent. So, I got these guys on and crimped so that we can uh, put the other side on over there and then just drop this piece right on top of it. That should work just fine. Okay, got the base in, number one. Base number two, 
Base number three. Let me get the crossbar. What do I do with it? Ah, oh, there's the crossbar. Hang on. All right, crossbar. Uh, let's drop that one on. This guy goes on. All right, and that guy goes on. Okay, that's good. That's good. Push this guy. It's not a perfect fit. It's pretty darn close. Anyway, hang on a second while I get that tightened up. And there it is, all tied in and ready for action. And uh, I did say I was going to go with the blue, but I thought that the uh, the red might look a little bit better against the black. So yeah, while I was in the store, I changed my mind. It's not too bad. You can see that I took a little bit of the paint off. There's a little gold right there and there. Not actually gold. It's bronze. A little tiny bit of bronze right there. That one hung in pretty well. That one looks pretty good. But there it is from a distance. I think that looks pretty solid and nice. It doesn't detract too much from the engine. You know, it, it, like I said, I thought about doing it in silver, but it was just too distracting. So uh, decided to go black. But uh, that should work very, very well. Uh, you know, as far as that aspect goes, though, I'm going to have to do that in another video. i got to take this thing on a long drive, and we've got crappy-ass weather for probably the next five to seven days, which will get us through the weekend. So it's going to be a while before I take it on a long drive.